back-to-back national champion, Olympic gold medalist this past weekend, and now it appears as though he's on his way officially to World Wrestling Entertainment. Let's say hello now to the double champ, the back-to-back, Mr. Back-to-back himself, Gable Steveson. What's up, Gable? How are you, my man? Ariel, what's up? I appreciate it, always. True story, by the way. I told DC about you. He had no idea. He was completely clueless. That's a lie. That's a lie. <laughs> that is a lie. DC knew, DC knew way before. I know. Fair anyway, enough. Wait, do you remember the first time you met him? The first time I the first time I, I met DC was this weekend, face-to-face. Come on. Really? Yeah, I swear. Like, face-to-face is this weekend. Like, we've always FaceTimed over the phone. He's always called me out to play 2K. He's always, like, wanted to wrestle me, but he can never come to a sentence to get on the mat with me. But the first face-to-face me and him had, I think, was this weekend. Wow, that is incredible. When's the first time you actually met him on the phone, virtually, he called you, whatever? Probably a couple of years ago. Okay. A couple of years ago, he followed me on Instagram, and then he messaged and said, what's up? And then phone numbers exchanged, and then yes. after that, we just we just clicked, yeah. And and just curious, you know, um, I thought, uh, have you gone back and watched the uh, the telecast from this past weekend? A couple weekends. I thought it was really cool. Yeah. So, uh, like, I thought he added a lot to the broadcast. I, I, I think it would be smart to have him. What do you think? I think it was really good. I mean, he brought a different sense of, like, variety to the the broadcast instead of just the, the plain people that go out there and just say, like, Gable's going to win this match by this many points. Like, DC brought a sense of entertainment and, like, a, a show to it that was a lot different than the regular broadcaster and announcers that are that are out there. I agree. I hope he does it again. So congratulations, my friend, back to back. Uh, I mean, what a 365 day stretch for you. First national championship last year, then this one, Olympic gold in the middle. Is it even possible to ask, this might be like asking like who your favorite child is to a parent, but which experience was the best? Now that you've done the two back to back, you got the Olympic gold. Can you pick one? I think I picked the Olympic gold, you know, if you won the Olympic gold, like you get to see the world, like so many people message you and so many opportunities arise. I mean, the last time we talked, I was looking at WWE, UFC, NFL, and so many other um, major uh, businesses. And so the Olympic gold lets you see the world. It lets you meet so many people. It lets you become a new person in this world that you can gain so much access from. And so I think the Olympic is what helped me push to the top, really. What about this year's experience of winning the national championship as opposed to last year still the pandemic was still very much a thing weird season how would you compare the two i would compare this year a lot better you know just uh last year was kind of like a just getting it done you know i had to win the NCAA term i haven't won it yet covid canceled me in 2020 so 2021 i was going really hard to get it done and 2022 we come back there's fans the people are cheering you know the energy's there the sirens are going off when you run out and there's 25,000 people watching you to, to see who can beat you to win that NCAA championship. And obviously I went out there and did a good job and won. And I hope in everybody's eyes that they could tell that I went out there and put my best efforts too. So it was just cool to see the the fans were there and the, my family was there to cheer me on Matt's side too. Uh, you're no stranger to high pressure situations, but because there's this sort of like storybook element to taking off the the shoes and ending the uh, the run at Minnesota and all that, like with the champion. Did you feel a little pressure to end this on the perfect note? Oh, yeah. I felt a lot of pressure. I felt every – there was. I felt that as the tournament went on, the target on my back got bigger, and coaches were strategizing to beat me any way possible by not tying up and playing the edge game and shooting at the right times. And I felt as the – as things got deeper, I had to correct every single movement. Everything had to be perfect because one slip up, someone was going to try to beat me three to two, and I wouldn't – and I would hate to go out on a note that um, I leave my shoes on the mat at a third-place match instead of winning the first-place match. Was there one dude in particular that you were a little worried about? Now you can say, you know, you wouldn't want to say this going in, but in <laughs> retrospect, was there one guy that you were like, hmm, you know, not that I don't think I could beat him, but like he's going to give me a little more trouble? I always know the Penn State, um, Greg Kirkley, he always comes with his uh, best efforts. And Kale's a, Kale's a sense of wizard when it comes to beating high in, op- high in opponents. So when me and Greg wrestle, I've been wrestling him since I was a senior in high school. So this is not our first time meeting each other. And he comes with length, uh, quickness, fast feet, everything. So he's uh, he's definitely a tough opponent to, to get by. I saw, I think it was on Friday, um, that one sequence where you like leapfrogged over the dude. That's the crazy, I mean, like who does, who does that, especially at heavyweight? How often do you, like, have you done that a lot throughout your life to just like jump over a guy like that? That's crazy. 
I think uh, that first day at the NCAA tournament, I was feeling myself, and uh, <laughs> I did a I did a, quick, I did a quick slam the first match, and then that second match, I was just like, I tried to jump over him early in the match, and it was about to be a tech fall, and tech falls when you win by 15 points, and I just jumped over, and he missed my leg, and I was like, oh, that might go viral. <laughs> oh my god, that was incredible! I mean, incredible. I love that you come out to. I love it when you call me Big Papa. That's a. I mean, that's it's a, always been a walkout. Yeah, it's always been. Any particular reason? <laughs> I had a variety of walkout songs my freshman year of college, and then Big Papa came, and when I played it, the crowd just fed into it. And ever since then, like, I'm the biggest weight class, just the Big Papa, like, notorious. Yes. Um, so you win the national championship, and then there's a whole big scene, and they kind of know what you're going to do, and you take the, uh, you know, the shoes off, and you leave them in the, the center of the mat. Why does it feel like there are some people, including our pal DC, who are sort of putting it out there that maybe you're not done. Are you a thousand percent done or is there a chance that you come back? You know how it goes in combat sports. People say they're done and come back all the time. I know, I know. Um, for now, I'm done. For now, I'm going to focus on WWE and go to WrestleMania, do all those things. Um, but like I said, for now, you know, I know that competitive race is going to come back and who knows, it might be at the 2024 Olympic trials when I show up again, but I do feel like I will put the shoes back on just not for a little bit while. Okay. Now, as far as school goes, do you, do you care to graduate? Are you going to stick around? How's that going to go? I do care to graduate. The main reason why I came back to school this year was to graduate and to win the national tournament too. But you know, um, not many people could say they they got that diploma, you know. You know, so many basketball players go one and done, and they don't want to go to, go back to school because they got um, this money and they're getting the fame and stardom. Or football players go three and out and they don't want to go back. But I feel like um, I just owe myself to finish strong and get that diploma in business and communication. So just I feel like I owe myself to get it, and it's just like I owe myself to go back and win an international championship too. So when are you scheduled to graduate? Would you graduate in May? Yes, I think uh, middle of May or beginning of May. Right. But, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, you could come back and compete next year, right? Because you had that lost yeah. season? <laughs> yeah, I do have a 50-year opportunity. But I just, I don't know, like, the, I don't want to be that old head that's like, oh, he won as a 50-year. Because there was guys that were 27 wrestling in the NCAA tournament this year because the red shirts, the Olympic red shirts, the COVID year. I just don't want to be that person that comes back for a 50-year and, um, he, we dominate the tournament and all of a sudden I'm too old to be at the college level. I just don't want to have the, like interference. And I so I think I left a good impression the four years and I came to do four years in Minnesota. And, but yes, I do have that last year. And it's just, it's just on the table. And, and, and last thing about this, like, is it true that you can just show up for the big 10 tournament and then like, you don't even have to compete during the regular season? No, I could show up zero and zero and just get a random seed and just walk in and win. I mean, that's like, that's like two weeks out of your life. And then you become another national champion. I know it's something to think about, but you know, well, we, we may think about that when that time comes, but for now, for now you're just, done. Yeah. For now I'm done for okay. sure. Uh, but 2024 isn't done. 2024 is not done. I mean, when that time comes, I'll only be 24. I feel like I still got a lot left to, to prove, but, and this time I like to just be a part of WWE, be a part of Vince's, um, geniusness and, and go from there. Have you made a decision about 2024 yet? Not 100% decision. I mean, I have to run it by a couple people and make sure I'm still training wrestling, which I plan on doing anyways and just doing doing the whole shebang. So I, I hope to maybe show up. And if I don't, then 2028 is there and I'll only be 28 and right. try it. Uh, when do you have to decide by? <laughs> I gotta decide the week before the Olympic trials. I'm already qualified for Olympic trials, but one in the Olympic gold. Got so it. I can show up and just just say, hey, I'm gonna wrestle. Wow, that is amazing. What a life. Um, okay, yeah, so yeah. now it seems like you are, and by the way, uh, if you don't mind me asking, like this is your apartment, this is your dorm, where do you live now? This is my crib, like this just is, chilling. This like this is just a crib on campus. Okay, and you have like you're going to class today, right? I just got done. You just yeah. got, isn't that crazy? Like you just won the national champion championship. You're going to be like, is it tough to focus on this stuff? Or what kind, what kind of class did you have this morning? Um, I just had an intro to project management. I just got a few classes I need to get done. I just took a, I took a quiz this morning and um, my intro to media study class. So just got to, I'm just trying to get done. Like literally I'm just, I'm on the end. I'm trying to finish strong. Do you, do you feel like it's tough? Like to keep that motivation, that focus? Oh, yeah. 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 People don't understand how hard it actually is. Like when you're 
when you're getting your life set up and you've already got so many cool things you've already done and you got to go back to school and sit in the classroom and like have a teacher tell you that um, five, <laughs> five plus five is 10, like, you know what I'm saying? So it, 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 it gets a little tough and I do sit there like, kind of like, why am I here? But at the end of the day, I, I want to finish strong and I want to be um, a great role model and a leader at the end of the day too. Are the kids like talking to you about it in class or being like, yo, I saw you this weekend. <laughs> there, there's some that say what's up, but yeah, I, they keep it cool. Yeah. We all keep it nice. And so that's the, that's the cool thing about going to, to the class too. Like we all just come to, to focus on our learning. Uh, after you won on Saturday, did Brock hit you up? Oh yeah. He was one of the first oh, like, really? immediately. He was one of the first. He said, great job. Um, congratulated me on my good interview too. We said I had a really good interview, which I was proud to hear. You know, I've been working on, uh, um, just my talking skills and making sure that I can take things off of me and put it on other people, you know, like my success. So I would hate to go on a ESPN interview or this type of interview and say that I'm the best, I'm the greatest American heavyweight to ever wrestle. But I would rather tell you that I would have another person do that instead of me and say that I would love kids that be better than me and anybody else who wants to do what I do, they can do it better too. Wow. So he gave you, how have you been working on this? Like to improve your interview skills? Just just been watching how, you know, people talk, you know. I like um how Roman Reigns talks on on Friday Night SmackDown. He's so he's so productive. He he's um strong with his words and he's just uh he's just one of a kind um spokesperson. So I just I look at a lot of interviews online, like mm-hmm. how celebrities talk and how they take the take things off of them and put it on the people to to congratulate themselves, but while making sure that everyone gets the love put on them too. So it's um, it hasn't been a hard thing, but I think I've been doing really good at it. Uh, when Brock hit you up, did you tell him that his haircut is whack? I told him that a while ago. Okay, because okay. he told me he he told me my haircut was whack a long time ago. So what the big one, the fro, the fro, yeah, the fro. Yo, the I, f- that's the last day I had it. Literally, the, well, the fro is a million times better than the thing that he has on his head. That's what I told him, but you know he likes the Viking. He likes all that. Um, yeah old old garbage you know so i'm gonna let him do him and you know i'm always support him by the way uh speaking of brock he's come along like he's actually quite likable in this uh you know baby face Ooh, role. Yeah. have you enjoyed it i i love every second of it i mean he's just um he's bringing a new personality to the world that nobody has seen you know if you know brock behind the scenes like you know that he's a he's a he's always a cool dude he's funny he talks so much but like that in person like TV persona has been a lot different lately. And I think um, it's cool for people to see like, that's how he really is. And he's putting it out to the world or so. Yeah. I, maybe this is more of the real Brock that we're getting to see after all these years. Has Heyman helped sure, you yeah. a little bit with the interview stuff? Heyman, he's a wizard. You know, he, there was times where he would tell me like certain things to spin to make like an attraction bigger than it should be. He's just so smart. And he's, he's literally a genius at what he does. I mean, if you see him on, with Brock or Roman Reigns, he's just, he's perfect. Like his character is just crazy amazing. So are you in contact with him? All the time, yeah. Okay. I'm in contact with all of them. Okay. Uh, Triple H, um, Triple H reached out and okay. he sends a lot of tweets about me. I think he, Triple H is really high on me and me and him have a good connection. He's a great dude. Um, Nick Khan, um, he's another executive at WWE. He's a really good dude too. He reached out. Um, they all show a lot of love and I think that's really cool. Nick Khan, president of WWE, not just some executive, for the record. I, mean, I didn't want to say a higher rank. You already know who he is. Yeah. My former agent, by the way, seven years he was my agent. You know, he used to be an agent. Yeah, yeah for CAA. Yeah, he's, he's Uncle Nick yeah. to me, you know, if I'm being honest. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's, he's solid dude. I, I, I like him a lot. Uh, okay, so WrestleMania is next weekend in Dallas. Yes, it is. You will oh, be yeah. there? Yes, I will. Now, are you going to be there as, like, the guy in the crowd, like, waving, or are we going to actually, like, get dirty here? Um, I'll just be there. You know, <laughs> I'll be there. <laughs> Running? You always, try to, you always try to hit me with these curveballs, and I'm ready for them, just like last time. I'm, I'm going to be there. That's You're going to be there. You're going to be there. Uh, as a oh, yeah. spectator or as a part of the show? Just, I'm going to be there with capital there. Oh, okay. straight through. <laughs> I'm going to be there. Like, I'm there. You, yeah. you know what I'm saying. You, you know it'd be crazy. You show up, you come down, everyone thinks you're coming down to help out Brock, main event, you turn on Brock, <clears throat> side with Heyman and Reigns, and say, you've been, you know, you, you've been big brothering me. I've been in your shadows. I'm a two-time national champion. I'm an Olympic gold. Where's your Olympic gold, Brock? You ain't got an Olympic gold. I'm better than you. I'll right. always be better than you. What about that? That's a good promo. 
that that is a crazy story but um i'm gonna let uh the creative take that side and <laughs> i'm not even gonna say too much all right fair enough so when does it start like is it st- is your wwe career starting now it, it'll start the day wrestlemania hits or the after that i mean i don't know like um my exact start date is in the middle of april so they're, they're letting me finish school they're letting me do my thing and then Monday Night Raws will either come really soon or shortly after that. But I'm yeah. planning on getting on TV and getting in the ring on TV really, really soon, probably in the next after WrestleMania. Sick. Uh, and and you were drafted to Raw, so you would be on Raw, right? Um, mm-hmm. Are we bypassing NXT? Um, as of right now, I'm not. I mean, I believe so. I think um, so. NXT is a great program. My brother's on NXT, so I, I love to, to watch it and tune in. And he's doing a great job down there, too, so... I think um, the plan for me was to go to Monday Night Raw and start out there and just produce myself and just be myself on TV right there. If it was up to you, uh, good guy or bad guy? Good that goes to bad. Okay. So start off but, good. Yeah, start off good. I mean, make the make the fans love you and then turn to the bad guy, kind of like Roman Reigns did or... I mean, even any storyline they give, I mean, I'm going to accept that. I'm going to go put my best foot forward on it. And I just, I love to, I love to be on camera. I love to do my, my thing and just bring a variety of who Gable Steveson actually is to the, to the outside world. And I'm assuming you'll be your, like, they'll use your name, right? They're not going to change your name or anything yes. like this. Now, yes, what, I, um, I'll be just Gable, Gable Steveson. Now, what do we do about Chad Gable? Like, we need to have a talk with him, right? We, 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 we we're going to have to have a talk with him. I mean, I don't even know when we might even talk to him. It could be WrestleMania. It could be somewhere else, but I just, I'm just not sure. It's going to be awkward. You can't have two Gables. You can't. You can't, but right now we do. And yeah. so there might have to be a little switcheroo. Okay. I don't know, but I love Chad too. He's a cool dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so so you'll go start there, and uh, and this is it. Like We're, we're now the career starting. You're, you're fully into that world. Uh, I'm assuming yes. you've been training? Oh, yeah. I've been down to Orlando. You know, my brother tells me everything and gives me the ins and outs while I'm here in Minnesota. So just um, psychologically training and physically too, just being down there and hitting the ropes here and there. So it's um, it's going to be a good time. I mean, I love I love all the new challenges. I love the, the spotlight that it brings. And I think um, me being who I am, I think I can excel really well in it. Nervous, excited, anxious? How would you describe? I don't, I don't really get nervous. I kind of get anxious to go... Uh, to perform like a lot of people ask me even like at the NCAA term like do I get nervous to run down from the crowd and the sirens playing and all eyes on you I think it's more of a excitement anxious to go out there and put on a good time for the people because you know when the lights hit I love when the lights hit because I feel like I perform even better than I should Mm -hmm. Um, you know we've talked about how you're sort of taking the Brock Lesnar route in your career you know you go to college WWE maybe then fighting. In fact, it's actually a little bit more like the Kurt Angle route because you won Olympic gold and he went to WWE. He never went to MMA. Is there a chance that you like this world so much that you never go into MMA? There's a chance. There's a there's a chance for a lot of things. There's a chance I do step into the MMA ring. You know, I, I like to challenge myself in all aspects. And I the Brock route is what I plan to take right now. And I think um, just learning from him and learning his steps is going to help me succeed to the to the maximum potential. And I think um, there is that chance to step in the octagon. And I think I'll be really good with the right training and the right um, support system around me. So I'm just going to leave that chapter open and maybe we'll write it. Maybe we won't. Did you see what uh, DC said to MMA fighting? I believe it was yesterday. It's true. It's true. I mean, he- I think it is. I, he, DC always supports, you know, I got all love for DC. I think he's, um, He's a great ambassador for NCAA wrestling, UFC, and so much other stuff. So, you know, his word is really um, trusted. Man, you would go into MMA right now. I mean, you would be just like you were in wrestling, but like every promoter would salivate. You're so young. You're so athletic. I I love that you're going this route. I will say like kind of selfishly, because this is the world that I live in primarily. I would just love to see how you would do in MMA. Like, I just think, I mean, it would be incredible to watch you do that. Is there a part of you that feels like, it will be like at least one, like maybe you're, you know, the the guy who does it once. Like, do you have to try it at least once? Do you feel like that has to happen just once? Yeah, I'm, I'm that guy that's got to um, got to do it. Like, just I even though I didn't want to come back to the the collegiate wrestling this year, like I feel like I had to. Uh-huh. And I WWE, like I'm doing it. I'm gonna go out there and do my best, and you know, I'm gonna put my hundred percent in that. And then when that time's up, maybe is there a time that I fight? You know, I would love to 
to step in and, and do it. And if things go well, I just keep progressing. Uh, when you're in WWE now, where are you going to live? Are you going to leave Minnesota or are you going to stay there? Minnesota's home base, you know, my, my mom and dad, my family here, you know, we're solid. We're a solid group. So, you know, I, I would uh, I would hate to up and leave them and leave them alone. So I, I would just love to to have them watch their son, like, grow up in their eyes and become a, a major figure and just have them next to my side would be really cool, too. So wherever they at, I'm at. And that's in Minnesota right now. So that that's perfect. So you'll be, you know, by this time next year, you'll be fully entrenched in the world of WWE. You'll tell them, yo, I just got to go back and do a three-peat real quick. I'll be back next weekend. <laughs> you can train with the team throughout the year. You win that yeah. one. That's 23. 24, <laughs> you win gold back-to-back. And then, you know, you a couple years later, we're going to... <laughs> <laughs> you setting me up again. You know I'm not gonna fold for this. You setting me up again. Every time I come on here, you just you got some. You got the slickest things that I maneuver through. I, I I, I'm you. showing you. Yo, I don't have any other collegiate wrestlers on this program. You've now been on, I think, three times. That's the love I have for you. These are the high hopes. I know. I, have and for I, you. I know you're so good. I see all your tweets and I appreciate them. You give me so much love. Like you in DC, like for like put on a good uh, put a good word out. So I, I always appreciate that. Respect, respect. Thank you. Um, how do you celebrate that, by the way? National chat. How did you celebrate on Saturday? I just went to my room and showered and just. Huh. That was that it. Was it. Like, yeah, I don't. I just be chilling. You know, yeah. it's like. Uh, I mean, people expect you to like go turn up. Like it's like the greatest thing in the world. But you know, win or lose, the sun hits the next day, and like we got to get up for the plane ride. And I just don't want to stay out till four a.m. And I got to get up at six to to get to the plane at eight and then stuff like that. So I just, I just was chilling and I just sat down and I looked at my phone and talked to a few people and that was it. Like, no, no big deal. And NIL, this, this has been huge for you, right? I mean, imagine if the guys oh, yeah, big. way back in the day could have had this, this changes everything. I think it'd be crazy even back in the day if like a lot of them, like Deion Sanders types had like yeah. NILs, they would, they would be going stupid. So I think uh, even nowadays, like, just it's cool to have money in your pocket and you can go to college, you go to class and you can buy a few things here and there and just just live a good life while being 21 years old. Uh, finally, before I let you go, in wrestling, in WWE, is there one guy, like a dream matchup for you that you would love to go up against? I think um, a dream matchup that I've been wanting for a long time. Obviously, Brock Lesnar, you know, Brock is Minnesota great, one-time national champ. Um, two-time finalist. He lost to Stephen Neal in, I think, 2000 or something like that. Um, just Brock Lesnar is the, the match I want. And obviously, he probably knows that. And he um, he's getting ready for that, too. So, I mean, when that time comes, it's going to be a great time, you know. It's going to sell bigger than probably him and Roma Reigns. So, oh, yeah, um, for sure. But Brock don't have two national titles. He don't have Olympic gold. So, my uh, stats right now, at this age, if we put him at 21, to me to 21, my stats are a lot maybe just a little better besides him being just a physical specimen and being on NFL team. But who knows that time's going to come. And when that time comes, we're going to welcome him with open arms, like everything else. I hate to correct you. Never made it to the NFL was a never was in the world of UFC is over the hill in WWE. I'm trying to pump you up here. Two time national champion, I'm Olympic gold medal. Far, you know? He wish, listen, Brock Lesnar can't even freaking wipe your shoes. All right. He can't hold your jock. He wishes he's jealous of you. He pretends like he's happy for you. He's jealous of you. So Sunday night, April 3rd, second night of WrestleMania. I can't, I'm going to be there. I'll be in Dallas. I'll be up in the, yeah, I can't see you again. Yeah, I'll be okay. there and I can't wait. <laughs> you're going to run down. Everyone's going to be like, Oh, Gable's here to save Brock, his mentor. No. Blah, blah. And then you're going to turn on his ass. You're going to hit him with the steel chair. <laughs> and then you, Paul and Roman Reigns. And you're going to, I can't believe Gable turned. It's the, the script writes itself. It's going to be one of the great moments in the, WrestleMania history. The script does write itself. And you wrote the script practically yourself and you did so good at it. So applaud to you always. Thank but you. I mean, Brock's my, Brock's my guy. He's been there since I was like 16. And it's, a, to, it's cool to have him watch me grow to where I am now with his help. And him sending texts like congratulations, that's, that's a lot from him. Because, you know, he's a man of few words if, if you're not in the, the circle that he's in. So it's cool to, to have that applause from him. And, you know, I got respect for everybody that shows love, like you, DC, and so many others. And uh, I hope to slide back on the show one of these times in a, maybe a year or something like that, just like we did last time. So I appreciate all the love. Thank you. For sure, man. Congratulations. Uh, enjoy WrestleMania. Enjoy everything that comes with this. Saturday night, 
uh, usually in the past, I'm watching, you know, I'm watching NCAA basketball. I'm not watching wrestling. I watched that entire broadcast waiting for you. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed everything. The backflips, the big papa, the sh- like the whole thing was great, man. I'm a huge fan. So congrats on everything that you're doing. Congrats on your success and good luck in this next chapter coming up. I appreciate everything. Thank you for having me on out. I'll see you again at, or I'll see you at WrestleMania. Yes, sir. Actually. Yes, sir. I'll see you there. All right, Gable. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. There he is, Gable Steveson. Remember that name? We've talked to you about him. He's been on the program. Now a two-time, two-time, two-time national champion.